just in the costume state of mind. You're always talking about this costume, so that's where I am. I'm always talking about this costume. And so these gauntlets. The reference photos have little knuckle knuckles across here. And I was thinking I wouldn't do it. But now I'm going to because knuckles are just cool, man. It just looks mean. I like it. And I think what I'm going to do is either coming down just a loop here where my fingers will it'll attach my fingers. Something to keep this close to my hand. So if I bend my wrist, this thing's not like that. I hate that. I do not like that look. That looks bad. So just something to look down to a bend. Like, yeah, it's supposed to be metal. Metal shouldn't bend like that. I don't care. I, I want to keep that gap tight. That's the way I'm going to do it. And it's just these knuckles. Uh, I may try to use, I had a couple of leftover spikes. I may try to trim those down because these knuckles, they are not that big. They're probably half that height. Uh, so I may try to cut these down or I may just make some new ones to do that. But I, I just, I was thinking about this and how it would gap. I don't like it. And I think this is the answer, just a loop. And I may just do a loop from like here across, uh, across the palm of my hand. The loop I'll figure out later. But the knuckles are happening right now. Sketched out my pattern for the sword. I traced it on a piece of foam. This is a piece of foam. I'm going to split this long ways and try to wrap it around the tube. Now it's going to be a kind of a roundish sword. That's okay. I mean, the effect is when I come in with a four foot long or a four foot six long sword. I think the blade is like three foot six. That's the effect. That is awesome. And so if it's a little rounded, nobody's really going to know or care. I have sliced this sword in half. Cut could be better. Could be worse, but could be better. And I'm definitely, I wish I had done a little bit of testing before I cut this whole thing out. I cut it out late last night. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I should double check and make sure it wraps around the PVC. And it does just barely. The nice thing about foam is, you know, you can kind of pull it and stretch it. So like this, this thinner part right here at the base, I'm definitely going to try to pull that and stretch out a little bit because it, it is, it's a tough bit. So I need to kind of pull it, stretch it out. And I did that on a little test piece and it did work. So I'm hoping it'll work on this larger piece. Because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get into some stretch to get it. Uh got it a little thin, man. Look how thin I got that. That is not what you want, but it is what I got. Like I said, this sword, the stakes on the sword are a little bit lower than the rest of the costume. Uh actually I would like to have done a better job. You know, you're gonna do something to do it right. But it I mean we we are where we are. We're not gonna go anywhere else. These are the knuckles, these small foam pieces, they are difficult to cut because foam it's squishy, it moves, it's hard to cut. So just a little trick, if they're not even like what I've done, is I'm kind of made these even amongst themselves. They kind of taper one way or the other. But I just like, this one was a little bit wide on this end, so I sanded it down to be more even with this small one. So I tried to arrange them so they look more even than they really are. I mean, yeah, they are, they're a bit crooked, you can tell, but it just makes them look a little more even. They're probably a little tall. I just don't feel comfortable cutting them any shorter. Uh, with a razor blade, you know, you're just gonna get some twist with a bandsaw. I think it's just too close so this is what it is i mean like you look at how big these gauntlets are i think it's gonna be fine it'll be it'll be perfect i did the knuckles to the gauntlets the glove part i like it it looks very good i mean they're not perfect but you know this whole costume's got a little bit of a roughness to it that's going mean, look at that that just it looks right that's what it was missing and i will i'll just strap it to my hand i think with a piece of elastic i think i've got some black elastic i hope i do because I always have white, but white's not really going to go with this costume. Black's going to blend in a lot better. Did do a little bit of sewing on the belt. I don't exactly know what I'm going to do here, but this is a tri-bind. A little bit big for this, but this is the nylon tri-bind I have. I only have one inch, so it's just going to work. You're not going to see the belt, because I'll be layering it with foam to get this look of these vertical pieces the belt has. I still don't quite know what I'm going to do for a belt buckle. I need to just sit down, look at Airden's costume, and figure out, like, if he had a belt buckle, what would it look like? You know, horn seems a bit cliche. I, I don't know. But the buckle's going to be something that is either going to be like glued to one side of this and kind of flaps over or somehow attaches over. I just need to figure out the business end of that. And I haven't yet, but, you know, there's still a little bit of time. This is the belt. Does it look a little rough? Yes, it does. That's what happens when you cut four, six, eight, ten at a time. When you can see, like, that one, nah, not too bad. Some of these you can see some rough cuts in it. I, I kind of like the belt being rough, and I just didn't want to cut out all of these one at a time. I mean... Those look really bad. The little buttons on the top, that is the same size as the buttons on the gauntlet. Yes, the reference photos, that button is as wide as the post, but guess what? That's the circle size I can make, so that's the circle size I got. And it's better than nothing, and I just like that it's gonna add a little bit of interest. Now the sword, look at this big thing. So unfortunately, I should have cut it a little bit wider, probably should have added like maybe half inch or so. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a tight fit. 
Uh, I think what I'm in, like right now the plan is this. I've glued the edge of this and I'm gonna glue it to the bottom side of this where it kind of form a peak. And it's just it's such a tight fit. I didn't cut it wide enough and that's what it is. I didn't want to have to recut this whole thing again because it's just big and again I, I think it's the effect of the sword rather than the details of the sword that's gonna sell the thing. Uh, I don't quite know like this base this is the narrowest part I've got. That's gonna be a very tight fit. I'm gonna have to hope that I can stretch that foam just enough to touch. Maybe I just kind of cut a triangle and put a filler piece in there because up here gets a little easier as it gets wider. I don't know. Right now I'm kind of gluing like the larger triangles. I'm gluing those first because that I have enough space for. And I'm gonna just glue a little bit of time and figure out once I get down to the space where it's the tightest, what can I do? So there's some lattice work off of the right pauldron. I cut it. I used my wood burning tool to kind of shape it and smooth it a little bit. I was using my heat gun to kind of burn the texture off the back and it kind of like burned the front, you know, I just didn't quite think that through. Burned the front, luckily I realized what was going on. Don't know, I mean, I don't really want to redo this. I don't know if I can scab on some foam to fix that. Maybe it just is what it is, it's some crazy battle damage. I mean, you can still kind of shape it. Luckily this is the front, so the front looks okay, but gosh, man, I just, uh, yeah, I should have known it was going to burn that up a little bit more. But, you know, I've, I've burned some things before. I think part of the problem is since I'd angled, tapered cut all this, angled cut it, chamfered it, chamfer cut it. Uh, you know, you didn't, I think, like, you kind of get that grainy part of the foam, and I think that just burns a little bit easier. And I, I just, I mean, you can see, like, right there, completely burned that up. The rest of it looks okay. I'm going to keep going, so I just, I don't have time to redo this. But I just, I'd had some rough cuts. You know, there's some curves here. And I'd use the wood burning tool just to smooth some of that out. It looked it looked good. It looked a lot better. And then I just completely burned it. And it's uh, yeah. I wish I wish I'd not done that. It's okay though, because this goes on the right shoulder. There's some spikes that go over top of it, so it'll cover. It. I just didn't want to see the texture on the bottom. I didn't want to stain it. I didn't want to cut it. I didn't want to fool with that. Uh, now texture stain. I ain't fooling with it. Just for comparison, here's a piece of foam I'd burn just to kind of test. And you can see. Where I cut it, it really burned up, made that up that foam. I think when you cut it and expose that, I mean, maybe there's some kind of like cutting on this. But you look at this, that didn't, that did not, if you get where you see it, that didn't really burn it up very much. You know, where there was a, this surface, but as soon as you cut it, where it cut, it really burned it well. So I guess that's the thing. If you cut it, it's going to burn it up. If you leave it kind of okay, it, it doesn't burn it up as much. Wish I'd known that before. We've been running along. See, this is the lattice work over the right shoulder, and these are the spikes that go over it. I don't know why that one is curving out like that. I have to heat those. If you notice a mistake, I've got the spikes on these, you know, in this orientation parallel to it. They should be turned 90, no, not 90, 45 degrees. Uh, but when I cut them, I just completely forgot about that. So I cut them straight, so I put them on there straight. I'm okay with that. It's going to be the way it is. Nobody's really going to notice. Uh, but how this orientation is, this attached to the pauldron, and this is over it here, 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 and here. It'll look fine. Right now I'm working on, there's like this, like a mini cape just over the arm. I don't really understand the function of it. And so I've been cutting out with paper. Yes, paper's not drape like material, but I just kind of wanted like a rough idea of how big to make it. You know, how long does it need to be? As you look at the reference photos, it kind of like curves into the shoulder, like it folds back. Same for the back, it kind of folds in. So I'm trying to get enough of that. Uh, I've got like a wool blanket I used for the Mandalorian cape I'm going to use for that. I just really like the weave of that material, the feel of that material. So I'll use that. The other side, it's got like a, a secondary sleeve. It's like, on this side it's a cape that looks ragged. On the other side it looks like just a sleeve that goes over it. Need for that. I don't know what material I'm going to use for that. You know, I could use leather. I hate to use my leather sometimes because, you know, I've got some really nice leather and I hate to waste on something like this that may or may not matter. Uh, because I've strayed from the reference material so many times that I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, I kind of need it though because I don't have right now I think I'm just going to wear a long sleeve gray shirt under this I don't know if I have time to do the underclothes I mean there's some padding and stuff around the middle I don't really know what's going on with the arms because you can't see it due to this material so I really need something to cover both arms just to hide the fact that I might get a little lazy and not do the gamut on the underclothes on the belt buckle I think the belt buckle right now I might just do something kind of square and just do like maybe short spikes maybe just like right down the middle of it uh, just a couple spikes I think that kind of fits with spike aesthetic of this costume and I don't know if it's going to velcro over or slide over or I don't know but I think that's what's going to happen look at this I thought I'm just going to leave that be not do anything with it you know if I get to it at the very end I'll do it but it needs something it's a little plain you know these shoulder arm materials they don't cover it 
So I know there's at least like some rib patterns. There's spinal cord going down. There's like some bones going down. So I'm gonna add at least just a little bit because this is very plain. And if I just add like this, the orange and white you see here, if I just add that to the back, it at least gives it something. I mean, there's some bones that go down there. My back thought someone there and in, so there wouldn't be as many bones. There's some spinal cord things. Those would be kind of cool to do. I haven't quite figured out what that is. I mean, I look at these pictures of these little spines. I don't know. So I may just make something up, kind of round it, curve it, put like something vertical on it to just give it the, the look. You know, because it doesn't really matter what it exactly looks like. It just needs to be something I'm happy with ultimately. So I just need to figure that out. Because I just I think about the back. There's nothing to cover it, and it looks so plain. I mean, do I paint it silver? Do I paint it red? It's just one surface. I need to get a little detail on there so I can get that visual interest and dirt and highlights and everything. Because there's there's nothing that there's no crevices to add dark washes to to create low lights. There's no edges to create highlights. So I gotta have something on there. Check out this shoulder. That just looks very mean. I love this costume looks mean. I love it. I like it a lot. I mean, some of these things I need to shape and curve a little bit. Some of these are sticking out. But I mean, overall, just the, the effect this has. Can you imagine wearing that? So next, you know, there's some cloth coming out of here, but I that just that looks good. That came out really well, despite my mix up and mistakes came out really well. One thing I realized as I was planning out the detail in the back. On the reference photos, these scapula pieces of armor, they are glued on top of the little back ribs. I already glued them down to the thing. Can I rip them up? Yes. Am I going to? No. So what do I do when I've screwed up like that and I don't want to backtrack? I'm still going to do kind of, basically there's a kind of a border with like these kind of ribs, these, uh, not really ribs, just these lines, kind of these scallops, these scallops going on each side. And then there's these little rib pieces just kind of horizontal that go all the way down so i think i'm going to do those out of the formats but just cut them in half so they're not deeper than these scapula pieces and i mean really they go all the way here i may just do like a couple ends right in here and then do a couple here there's the big spinal cord pieces going down here i will do those i'll lay in the scallops first they kind of meet in the middle i'll do the backbone pieces i'll stop here the nerve and they go down, but I don't know how to transition from the armor to where I went underneath. I'm just not going to, I believe. And then I'll lay in these rib pieces and see how I think they should fit. Because this needs something. It's too plain. This, this, the spinal cords will look good. The rib pieces, you know, maybe I skip those after I lay, lay in the scallops. We'll see. But of course, it's one of those things. You know, you're rushing to get done. You, you're like, oh, let me just glue these pauldrons and everything on. It happens. I call that making this costume my own. Why do I want to look just like reference photos? I want to make it my own. That's what I'm doing. I'm finally getting ready to do this belt. This has just been this weight that I've been putting off. Because I just, I don't care about the belt. So I am duct taping it. That's going to be fine. To this foam, it's going to be a good bond. I will be gluing the foam. I'll be contact cement here. I'll sandwich it just like that the whole way. That's my triglide to tighten the belt. It's going to look great. Got all these pieces of glue, a lot and a lot and a lot of glue. Uh, still, the buckle, I've not figured out. I know who I want it to look like. I just need to actually make it. It's probably going to be EVA foam. Uh, just, you know, cut cut a square, cut some spikes, run it across. It's going to look great. I mean, part of the thought, should I try to dress it up, make it look even cooler? But I don't I don't have an idea yet. And even if I want to look, make it look cooler, how to do that? You know, maybe, maybe I take some inspiration from this lattice work and do just some detail work. Potentially could. We'll see. First... Oh, this belt. Lots of glue, lots of time. I am liking the belt. Now, I did not account for the fact that I would see the webbing behind. That's okay. Uh, you know, if I had known that, I might have situated the webbing a little bit higher just to be blocked more. But I don't know how the webbing's going to take the paint. Hopefully, it'll take it okay. I, but I, I like this. I mean, it looks a little rugged. It looks a little rough. I like that. I think it kind of adds to this character. Uh, I may have to do the buckle backwards so i don't have the strap out and have to figure out where to hide it because it's you have to tie it back or loop it somewhere and there's not really many good places to do it but overall, I, mean, I like that a lot i just gotta figure out the buckle got some ideas for that and at this point i think it'll probably just be a case where it flaps to the back and there's just some velcro and it just loops right over i don't need it to be structural i mean I can fake it but overall overall i like that a lot that look it's got a good look to it got a rough look that is finally done. That has been taking a lot of space on my workbench. No longer. So now I have everything else I need to do, which is considerable. It is really nice, like especially 
the last couple of days to see a lot of progress being made, like to see this shoulder thing completely come together. Uh, it's been a little bit more real while the deadline's looming. I can see the end of it. And that is always a great feeling. And I mean, this thing, it just, it's gonna look so mean, so scary, and it's Halloween, and it should be scary, and that's awesome. Putting all of these little spikes for the leather strips on the belt, I realized something, I wish I realized it earlier. So when I am cutting these little foam pieces on the bandsaw, when I first cut them, you know, I'm, this is parallel to the table. So I send it at an angle, yeah, at an angle, at a different angle to get that part. Well, so then I send it this way, well, if I'm sending it through the table saw like this, the angles aren't really parallel. It needs to be going through, you know, completely perfect. I just send it on the table at an angle. So that's why all my spikes look a little lopsided. So since I'm using two two by fours to sandwich it to go through, so my fingers are far away, uh, I started angling where the tip is up and it's a little more parallel to where it should be. And my spikes come out a lot better. Uh, have I cut a lot of spikes already? Yes. Did I do them slightly wrong where they look a little lopsided? Yes, and now I know why they all look slightly lopsided. So now they're coming through a little bit better. You let me learn. But, you know, of course, if you're sitting it flat like that, well, the angles the angles are off. They're skewed that way, where it needs to be a little more parallel. So now I know. Uh, so, you know, at least half of the spikes on the leather strips on the belt will look good. The other half I'll put on the back. That works out. I like craft foam as an overlay. It is very forgiving. It stretches quite easily. It compresses. I mean, if you've got too much length, you can kind of just tack it down with the contact cement, and it'll compress enough to look good. So it's very good. That's why I like craft foam, but it's not very structural. You can't build, you can't build armor out of it. I mean, if you layered it, many layers thick, then it just be the floor mats again. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna add the whole spine thing. I uh, thought about not doing it, but you know, it just needs it. It needs something, and I hate to. I've strayed many times from the reference material, but that, it needs to do it. And I think I will cut the lower jaw off the helmet. Yeah, you know, I thought about it. Do I want to? Do I not want to? But I do, I want that a little closer to the reference material, so I'm going to have to just do it. But anyway, I mean, look at this thing. I'm just loving how this thing's looking. Like, I'm making all kinds of progress, which I need to. I mean, we're getting tight on time. Uh, I, every day, I'm like, all right, if by the end of the day, I can start in the leg armor, I'm going to be in good shape to finish. And every day passes, and I haven't started leg armor yet. And so I'm going to say it again today, if I can get started with leg armor, I think I'm going to be in good shape to finish. And I, I think I have a legitimate chance to actually start on leg armor today, which will be good, because I've been saying it for the past three or four days, if I can just start on leg armor today. But today is the day. So I'm trying to come up with a sleeve pattern out of this leather I have. This is what I've got. I just don't want to cut up another sheet of leather, because this is so close. So I'm going to kind of sketch the edges and just get close enough. I might, I might have an extra seam in there. But overall, it's going to look fine. And I don't, I was looking at reference photos. I've not played the game. I've looked at YouTube videos of the game. But you can't really, I've not seen the sleeves very well. But in my mind, when I started this, I thought, based on what I'd seen, like one sleeve was kind of a woolish material, the other was leather. And I can't back that up with the reference photos I have or what I've seen. But it's what I had in my mind. That's what I want to do. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's why I'm doing this one sleeve. It's kind of like the sleeves are different. Uh, there's like some hem on the bottom. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet just because that is yet another thing to do that I want to do. But I think I've got this pattern together. I've got these three pieces. I'm going to try to hem them together and create this one big sleeve. And I think it's going to be close enough. Uh, I still don't know about the hem along the bottom. Yes, it would be nice. Don't want to do it. No. We'll see how I feel. Some things I spend time on trying to get them right. Some things I just throw together this back. I'm just throwing together. But I really like how these spinal things came out. I uh, threw them together rather quickly. Not really knowing what I'm going to do with that. But I like it. I like it a lot. And it really, I just kind of created an oval, made wings that were felt floor mats cut in half. These strips are also floor mats that just kind of tuck in between each one. And then just put these little ears on it. But it, I mean, it's just funny. You keep adding detail, more and more stuff. And that looks really good. It looks even better from far away. I mean, you get up close, it's, it shows I just threw it together. From far away, uh, it just gives it such a nice look. Like, I really hated these little rib pieces. I mean, they just, they look like crap. They are crap. That's okay. But this spine, that really brings together, really kind of saves it. So, things are coming together. It's looking good. I finally started on leg armor. I'm done a template for the knee. Where is it? It is right here. I am going to do a test cut on kind of curve because this knee, it bulges out, curves back in, flares back out. And so, I just want to do a cut uh, with some scrap foam to make sure that when I glue it together, it curves correctly. You know, it needs to 
the cut kind of needs to follow the curve in the knee. I just want to make sure if I do that curve, is it right? Too much? Too little? I just want to make sure it works out right. Man, it is it's something. We are, I mean, this, this armor, like, look at that thing, man, from the arm, you know, you got the back, I've cut leather and wool for the sleeves, I got the gauntlets, it's, the top half is looking good. You know, if I'm on camera like this, this costume looks, gonna look great. I actually need to paint it, but the leg armor it shouldn't be bad. A lot of it is scoring just to make it look like there's different panels. There's the knee, what's blood, you know, the shin, the thigh, shin and thigh are just scoring, should be pretty easy. The shoes are segmented armor type things, but I think that's just going to be craft bone, and I'm just going to cut some sections and really just freehand it. That, I'm going to get the rough idea of what the reference photos are and then just do whatever fits over the shoes I'm wearing. I'm not really going to worry too much about it because, you know, as long as it looks kind of like segmented armor, nobody's going to care. It's like, oh, that's, that doesn't match the reference photos. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to even know what this character is. So I really have free range. Oh, you know what? I was going to cut the lower jaw off the mask and kind of just do a filler piece because... I do want to follow that aspect of it. I just think it kind of is a neat dynamic, neat dynamic that there's no lower jaw. This looks a little bit too much like, um, oh gosh, is it General Craig from Willow? There's the movie Willow, and there's like this cool villain that is a skull helmet. I think General Craig, definitely a king. I don't know. I gotta get to work. I gotta cut out some neat armor, figure that stuff out, because time is not on my side. <laughs>